In this video, we're gonna be creating some character using wood effects. Coming up after this. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Burn to Quilla Painting. My name is Graham and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can use something as simple as popsicle sticks to really add character to either your miniature bases or your miniatures themselves. So I'm gonna show you how I did the back door, back door. <laughs> I did it on the rear hatch of one of my rhinos because I wanted that kind of decayed garden look. I think this is a really, really awesome technique and it's really simple to do. And I wanna share that with you guys because I think it adds loads of character and gives it a little bit more pop than just having something that everyone else has. You could use this in a multitude of different ways. You can make it improvised shields or just have bits of broken fences scattered terrain on your table. You can use it for sci-fi like I have and also fantasy. So there's just a few different things you can use this for. Mine's a really beaten up look and that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. But if you want a clean, new looking version, that's easy to do as well. So the look that I wanted was that kind of broken garden gate look. Something that's been left for years, it's been forgotten about and it's decayed because obviously I'm painting this for my Nurgle army. So I went online and I looked for dead decayed wood, broken fences, dead wooden fences. And I found this image of like a broken rotten fence and I really liked it because it had loads of different colors and loads of contrast in this one thing. Easy to see that it was a decayed fence but it had so many different colors going on so you've got those browns in there from like the original wood stain for when it was new you've got that white kind of old dry wood you've got that brighter orange for where it's rotten and dry inside but you've also got those greens from the moss that's been growing for years so this was my inspiration for my rotten Nurgle garden gate but before we even get to painting we have to make the thing And this was way simpler than you actually might think. First of all, I got a different selection of popsicle sticks, coffee stirrers, all different sizes, all different thicknesses. Any opportunity to have an ice cream or go get yourself a coffee. Because we're trying to simulate planks of wood with sticks, we want to add some of that wood grain that planks of wood would normally have, wood would normally have. And I did this by scoring in some grooves with my hobby blade. What this does is it gives the wood a little bit more of like a plank of wood look. We want to simulate that wood grain that wooden planks would normally have. Wood, 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 wood. And then taking a, a slightly more blunt tool, in this case, a small screwdriver, and scored in some of those lines to be deeper, just to give that a little bit more variety. Do this across all your popsicle sticks and your coffee stirrers or that you're going to use for your fences and gates. Because I wanted more of a rotten, beaten up look, I take my hobby blade and just take off all of those sharp angles on the edges of the, of the popsicle sticks and the coffee stirrers. This will give you a slightly more decayed, broken up, uneven look. But if you're going for like a, a more brand new looking fence, skip this step for a little bit more of a uniform look. What we want to do now is make the actual gate. So what I did was take my different sizes of coffee stirrers and popsicle sticks and mix them up so it looks like a ramshackle jumbled gate. Now if you're making a brand spanking new looking gate, I would recommend using the same width sticks. You get more of a uniform look. But that is not what we're doing here. We want it decrepit. We want it rough. We want it broken. That's why I'm using lots of different size coffee stirrers and popsicle sticks. It just gives it that more of a ramshackled, old, worn kind of look. Once I have those vertical posts done, I felt like they needed to be a little bit more broken and rotted. So I simply just snap them to get that, that rough, broken edge. Once that's all done, I just simply put them all in place and stick them down with super glue. It's literally that simple. No PVA, no wood glue or anything like that. Because I'm going for that more of a ramshackled look, I just slap them on, stuck them down, and there you have it. Honestly, I can't say enough how simple this actually is. Next, looking at gates and things, you get that kind of top and bottom support with usually with a uh, 
with a diagonal in between. So I went on to make that just to give it that kind of structure, that gate look. For the diagonal, I did do a little bit of measuring, but because I wanted, again, that ramshackled look, I wasn't ultra neat with it. I feel like the, the more rough and ready it is, the, the better the kind of that ramshackled look I was gonna get. Once I had them in place, I dry fitted them and stuck them down with a bit of super glue. Now, if you want more of a neater effect, you can just use your hobby clippers for a nice crisp edge or even the tops of the popsicle sticks where it's rounded. So you get that kind of white picket fence look. But we're not going for that white picket fence look, are we? I really liked how this was coming together, but I really wanted something a little bit more. And what is a broken, decrepit, rotten wooden gate without some rusty nails holding it together? And this bit was really simple, but really effective at the same time. Like All I did was I drilled in some pilot holes where I wanted the, uh, the, the nails to be and then clipped some, uh, some metal wire, you could use uh, paper clips or anything like that, down to size and then just pop them into the holes. A little bit of super glue just to secure them and there you go, you've got little metal nails. Bonza! That is your gate fully constructed and you can paint it however you like. So onto the painting and you will notice that I'm actually painting something different to the, the rhino gate that I did and that is because I'm an idiot and completely forgot to record the whole painting process. But this is how I painted it and uh, yeah, so you can follow along if you so wish. Now because it's wood, it'll just suck up any paint that you put on it. So I put a, a thick layer of black primer just to give it that good base for our paint to go on. Now this is where our reference photo comes into play. There was a couple of different ways I thought about painting this up. Uh, one of them was to start off light and then add those dark shadows and then add the contrast of the, the brownie oranges and the greens on top. But I went for a, a more kind of like traditional, I guess, uh, approach. So I went for the darker browns and then added those lighter tones on top. And this was for a couple of reasons. One, I felt like in the real world, that dark stained wood, uh, when it was like a new gate or a new fence, looked like it was stained with a dark stain. So in painting terms, that is effectively your base coat. So I started there. Also, I felt like the reference photo, the lighter colors of the dried decayed wood, they look like more like they're on top because they came later. So that's what I wanted to try and replicate in my painting. I don't usually talk about the exact paint ranges that I use uh, because you can use any range you like. So I will just use like a nondescript color for it, like a dark brown, medium brown, light brown, for instance. But if you do wanna know exactly what colors I use in any video, let me know in the comments down below. So now I have my base coat down. I know the approach that I'm going to take. I started off by thinning my paints down a little bit more than I usually would and building up those colors slowly. This is because I wanted to try and get that kind of multi-tonal look by using the same colors. This is a great way of like creating texture as well. If you go back and forth from your lighter and darker colors, you can really get some good variety in there. And that's what I was trying to do here. Once I'd got a couple of those like mid-tones down, I really wanted to utilize the texture that we'd made by scoring the wood right at the beginning. And all I did was just wash it with brown and black washes, using a little bit more black wash in like the recesses where the wood butts up to each other or in where the supports are as well on the wood. Once that was done, I went in with an off-white, thinned it down a little bit more than I usually would, and started building up the dry, dead areas with that color, not being afraid to go back and forth from mid-tones as well. Just playing around with the colors until I was happy with the look that I got, which was similar to the reference picture. One thing I definitely were keeping in mind while doing this is not to be uh, afraid of making mistakes or anything like that, just going oh, full bore into it. And I think the more I actually do that, the, the better most of the, the ideas come out. Sometimes I make mistakes, but it's not hard to go back and fix it. And quite a lot of the time, actually, I really really like the outcome 
first time round. Once I got to the stage of the general look of the wood was how I wanted it, I next went on to adding some of that more contrasty looks. And I didn't feel that the wood was had enough orange in it. But then I thought I've added these nails which would be rusty and they would have been streaked. And that's where I'm gonna add more of those contrasting colors. So I thinned down to a wash consistency, some bright orange paint and went around all of the nails and adding streaks and splotches of rust to give it that really nice rusty old look. And last but certainly not least is uh, the, the moss to get that final bit of contrast and that punch. And when I looked at my reference photo for this, like in nature, so often the it's not just one tone of green. So I started again with a darker tone of green where I wanted those main bits of moss to be. For this, I focused on areas where rainwater and moisture would build up. So on tops of surfaces, on the supports, in between the planks of wood, places like that where moisture would more often build up, letting the, the moss and all the, the green griblies grow. Green griblies grow. Okay, just to give it that a little bit more of a realistic effect. And once I was happy with that, I started adding a much lighter, vibrant green to give it that really nice punch. And that's the gate done. Honestly, I think it's came out great. And it, just that one subtle bit at the back of, of the miniature really helps to give that area of the, of the mini a little bit more character. We're not gonna be adding this to like every single miniature. It won't fit anywhere in most of uh, 40K armies. I think the, the, the one area that this will come in most handy is basing. Say you have a D&D &D character and you want him being like a decrepit wooden floor or something like that this would be brilliant there as well or if you have like a giant in your aso army and you want to give them a little bit more character say like an improvised wooden shield or something like that that would really work as well but as always guys thanks for tuning in thanks for joining me all the way to the end subscribe if you haven't already and you like this video let me know what you think of it in the comments always love to have a chat with you guys all my socials are down below as well. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can. I do have a Patreon. There's two different tiers on that. So if you want to help me out and help the channel grow, go over to Patreon. Link down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And uh, see you in the next video. Peace! Now, this is where our reference photo. Text message.